Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. Something I love about my favorite show is that it's so iconic that sometimes even the most popular media franchises directly reference it. And that goes to show how much people love it. Or maybe it just shows how it's stuck in everybody's brains until the end of time. As a fan of Spongebob, I love seeing direct references, nods, or just easter eggs to the show in other forms of media. Watching another show, seeing a line or image reference to another show you know, and you're like, Ah, <laughs> nice reference. If you're a fan of Smash Bros, you totally know how it feels seeing your favorite video game character and series referenced in this big crossover franchise. Since Spongebob is one of the biggest cartoons on the planet, there are a lot of winks and nods thrown into all sorts of pop culture, to the surprise of nobody. Today, I thought it'd be fun to take a look at some of the times Spongebob has been referenced in other forms of media. And today, we'll be starting off with other Nickelodeon shows. Now before we begin, here's a little disclaimer. First, we'll only be covering regular Nickelodeon shows, not any programs on Nick Jr. or Nick at Night. Second, look at this page from Encyclopedia Spongebobia that shows all the references to Spongebob in other TV shows, which is where I got all this info from. There's so much stuff here, I can't cover it all in one sitting. We'll most likely be picking the subject up in the future, but for now, we're sticking strictly to other Nickelodeon shows. Finally, we're gonna start off with the cartoons and then move on to the live action shows. Alright, without further ado, let's get this started. Kicking it off with everybody's favorite boy genius, Jimmy Neutron. In the Jimmy Neutron episode, Operation Rescue Jet Fusion, when Jimmy, Carl, and Sheen are at the bottom of the ocean, if you look closely in the background, you can see a pineapple in this scene, and we all know that there's only one pineapple under the sea. In Avatar The Last Airbender, during the season 1 finale, Master Paku said to one of his students, Nice work, a couple more years and you might be ready to fight a sea sponge. The audio commentary confirmed this line was indeed a reference to Spongebob, and Spongebob was actually somewhat decent at karate, so that's pretty neat to me. Moving on to the world's most famous crossbreed, Cat Dog. In an episode that's called Cliff's Little Secret, a picture of Spongebob can be seen in a movie theater. Next up is the show that often played catch up with Spongebob and another show I really liked, The Fairly Odd Parents. There are a few nods to Spongebob in this series. In one episode called Wish Fixers, Timmy wishes up a pair of turbo powered cheese pans and Cosmo calls Timmy Cheese Boy Squarepants. In another episode, Something Fishy, Greg, the merman king of Atlantis, says that the diet of the Atlanteans consists mostly of crabs, starfish, and the occasional underwater squirrel, which is a subtle jab to Mr. Krabs, Patrick, and Sandy. Mermaid people eating sea creatures. I wonder if that's cannibalism. In another episode called App Trap from Season 9, there's a character who is basically a human version of Spongebob with the same buck teeth, eyes, and clothes. I always wondered what a human Spongebob would look like. In Fanboy and Chum Chum, there's an episode called Fanboy Ahoy where the main characters play pirates. Chum Chum's pirate name is Chum Bucket. Additionally, the title of this episode, Fanboy Ahoy, is a reference to the show's original working title, Spongeboy Ahoy. Another relatively unknown Nickelodeon cartoon is Harvey Beaks. There are a few references here. First, there's an episode called King of the Castle that had a pizza box that says Pizza Castle on it, a restaurant Patrick mentioned in episode 86, The Bully. In another episode called Secret Gordon, there's a Spongebob shaped hedge in the garden if somebody looks close enough. Last but not least, in an episode called Fee's Pyramid, there's a mobile that has a snail that resembles Gary. Also, this is more of a fun fact than a reference, but Harvey Beaks was created by C.H. Greenblatt, who was a writer and storyboard director during the earliest seasons of the show. Time for a classic Nicktoon, Hey Arnold. In an episode called Weighing Harold, Spongebob can be seen on a record in one scene. Here's a modern Nicktoon that I feel went viral quickly, and Nickelodeon is milking it a lot nowadays, The Loud House. In an episode called Left in the Dark, Spongebob and Patrick are briefly seen on the TV. I see the resemblance, but I also don't. Where are their clothes? Where is the actual detail? In a couple other episodes, there's a poster in a kindergarten classroom that shows a red crab like Mr. Krabs, a yellow sponge like Spongebob, a pink starfish like Patrick, and a blue octopus like Squidward. 
First a brown squirrel like Sandy, a snail with a pink shell like Gary, and a green copepod like Plankton. Finally, in an episode called Roadie to Nowhere, there's a man wearing Spongebob's shirt, tie, and pants. For the final Nicktoon, here's a short-lived Nicktoon, Welcome to the Wayne. There was this one episode where a character morphs into an off version of Spongebob called Sponge Robert Rectangle Pants and was actually voiced by Spongebob's voice actor, Tom Kenny. Time to move on to the live action shows. First off, we have Big Time Rush. In an episode called Big Time Beach Party, Patchy the Pirate appears and has a treasure hunting subplot. Now, here's a fan favorite, Drake and Josh. There was an episode where Josh said that he had Spongebob underwear. I remember watching that episode as a kid, and I don't remember him saying anything about Spongebob underwear. Or maybe he did say it, and I just forgot because I'm a f idiot. Now for another modern live action show, Henry Danger. In one episode, there was a piece of clothing called Frankini Bottoms, which kinda sounds similar to Bikini Bottom. In another episode, Jasper said, Aye aye, Captain, which is a reference to the theme song. Moving on to a relatively unknown show, House of Anubis. In one episode, when some of the characters were talking about getting rid of cameras that were installed in the house, they mentioned the legendary comedic duo of Spongebob and Patrick. In another episode, another character tells her friend that her dad dances like Spongebob. In another not good show called Marvin Marvin, which I like to cringe at, a man was hallucinating and said, here's your clarinet, Squidward. And this is why you don't give YouTubers starring roles in TV shows. One of my personal favorite references was from Ned Z Classified School Survival Guide. During an episode about Picture Day, a kid dressed like Spongebob on Picture Day. Damn it, why didn't I think of that? Another show I like to cringe at is Nicky, Ricky, Dicky, and Don. In one episode, a Spongebob statue made out of Legos can be seen in one scene. In another episode about science, a character made a comment in the line of Science Bob Spare Pants. Finally, another episode shows a grandma watching TV and saying, that little fellow lives in a pineapple. Oh really? What was your first clue? Another mediocre show was Sam and Cat. In one episode, Cat was talking about looking for Spongebob's pineapple with a speedboat. Continuing on with another not great program, The Thundermans, one character said, what in Bikini Bottom is happening right now? Another relatively unknown show on the channel, The Troop, also had a few references. In one episode, a character was shown wearing a Spongebob backpack. In another episode, the Spongebob theme song was heard on the TV at the dentist office, and a character mentioned Spongebob and Patrick to the dentist. Moving on, here's another show, True Jackson VP. During an episode that mentioned the Macy Thanksgiving Day Parade, Spongebob was shown on a balloon during that scene on the TV. Another show that people remember from the mid-2000s was Unfabulous. This episode called The Song featured a You're the Best Friend Ever contest and one of the characters, Zack, voted for Spongebob. Next we have what was, in my opinion, the last good live action show on Nickelodeon, Victorious. In an episode called Tori Goes Platinum, the paparazzi showed up and thought Psychowitz was the voice of Plankton. In another episode, Tori gets stuck, Tori questions Robbie's Spongebob underwear, and Robbie hides it. I have a Spongebob watch, you don't see me hiding it. Last but not least, another fan favorite show, Zoe 101. In one of my personal favorite episodes, The Curse of PCA, when Leif thought Lola thinks he's silly, Lola said to Leif, Spongebob's friend Patrick is silly. And that was every notable Spongebob reference in most of Nickelodeon's other media. Going through all of that made me realize a few things. One, that lots of other Nickelodeon employees, current or former, like Dan Schneider, also really like Spongebob. Two, that I really miss some of those classic Nickelodeon shows like The Adventures of Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius, Zoe 101, Victorious, Drake and Josh, etc. And three, how much Nickelodeon shoehorns Spongebob references in their modern cringeworthy programs to try to get people interested in them. Obviously, there's nothing wrong with mentioning popular media in other popular media, but if it happens too much, it kind of sounds like a desperate attempt to draw in a crowd. For example, the limited amount of shoutouts to Spongebob in Zoe 101 or Ned's Declassified, those shows are really good and don't need to constantly throw in references to something popular to keep the audience's attention. 
While I love seeing Spongebob references in other shows, I know that it doesn't change the actual quality of the program. Despite that, it's still cool to see one piece of pop culture throw in some winks and nods to other popular media. All those Spongebob references go to show how Nickelodeon feels about their non-Spongebob properties from 2014 onwards. That they throw all their eggs in their one Spongebob basket and they send their bad Nickelodeon cartoons to the Nicktoons channel, where they get little to no exposure and just get cancelled from there. While I wish they had more faith in some of their other properties, I still can't imagine what would happen for Nickelodeon in the future. But who knows, maybe they'll actually release something that has a lot of creativity and humor just like Spongebob. Or they'll keep referencing Spongebob in other future bad shows just to try to keep others' attention.